Hi fellow car enthusiasts, my name is Istvan Imre. I have prepared a short presentation about diesels and the reason behind that is that several media outlets have forecasted the present year, year 2013, as the year of the diesel. I realize that many of you may be driving already diesel cars, but uh, also many of you might be thinking about a diesel as perhaps a new um, option uh, if you are trying to buy something that uh, consumes less fuel and it's environmentally more uh, responsible, just like the hybrids uh, would be. So let's uh, see uh, why should you consider a diesel. Well, first, diesel as a fuel is an oil and as such has a higher energy density than gasoline. If we were to consider petrol diesel, and petrol diesel is a fuel, diesel fuel that has been derived from fossil oil, physically speaking, um, the petrol diesel is about 12% uh, more dense than uh, gasoline is. And due to this higher density, uh, diesel as a fuel offers 11% higher volumetric energy density than gasoline, which means that if you were to burn one liter of diesel, it would give you about 11% more energy than burning one liter of gasoline would. This, of course, translates for the average car driving public to higher efficiency uh, when they are considering a diesel car as, a, as compared to a gasoline-engined uh, uh, vehicle. In fact, the savings are actually quite substantial. Diesel engines are about 20 to 40% more efficient than gasoline engines. Are there any disadvantages to owning a diesel car? Well, if you ask this question, you know, 15 or 20 years ago, the answer would have been um, yes. And the reason behind that is that diesel oil um, changes its properties as the temperatures decrease uh, during the w uh, winter season, the cold season. And as the temperatures are decreasing, the viscosity of the fuel increases. So basically, the diesel oil becomes less fluid and the fuel pumps of the cars can't really deal with it. I distinctly remember when I was a kid, and that was a long, long time ago, about 30 years ago, in Eastern Europe I saw, uh, in early morning when I was going to school, I saw truck drivers who made a fire under the fuel tank of their diesel truck. And the reason for that simply was that the... Uh, uh, Diesel fuel got very thick and gooey over the night, very cold temperatures, and they had to warm up the fuel tank and the uh, fuel in it so that they can start up um, their car. Of course, nowadays we don't have to deal with those issues um, because uh, diesel oil manufacturers have added additives to the diesel fuel to make it more fluid. Having said that, this is still an issue in very, very cold climates, like for example, the winter ice truckers would probably let their cars or their trucks idle in the truck stop overnight so that this issue um, doesn't happen. Now, what about diesels being dirty? We kept hearing popular media spouting this issue that diesels are putting a lot of particulate emissions and indeed they, they used to. Uh, but diesel technology came really a long way in recent times in cleaning up its act both in terms of adding scrubbers to cars um, with various modern technologies, as well as diesel oil manufacturers for the past six years or so have made um, a standard, the ultra low sulfur diesel uh, in Europe, as well as in Canada and United States. Now, Europe traditionally has led the way in the number of cars available, as well as being driven on, on the roads in Western Europe. And the reason behind that is that, uh, while well, car manufacturers have traditionally offered a much broader variety of choices in Europe than they did in North America, and the fact that European governments have traditionally subsidized um, diesel oil, the cost of diesel oil. Add to this mix the fact that the gas, certainly in recent times, has become a lot more expensive in Europe than it is in North America. And it's not surprising to see that, well, in Europe, about 50% of the car driving public went with the diesel choice. Now, do we have diesels available in North America? Well, we certainly do. Um, 
we used to have mostly only trucks, diesel trucks available as well as uh, as well as the heavy duty pickup trucks. But um, Volkswagen has been an um, um, automaker outside of North America that uh, has and still is bringing in uh, clean TDI diesels that are available for the um, car buying public. And uh, popular media outlets are forecasting about 20 or more models are going to be appearing on our shores in the next uh, year or so. For example, the Jeep Grand Cherokee will be offering a 3 liter eco diesel V6 eco diesel with about 240 horses, but it will be available only on the limited uh, model. So, hey, it's going to be pretty pricey. Uh, also, the new Mazda 6 will be bringing to our shores a new 2.2 liter turbo diesel. In terms of the long term, longer term forecast, we might be dealing with about 50 to 54 new models over the next four years being available for us uh, to buy. Now, big question that you might be asking yourself as somebody who has not had a diesel car and now it's suddenly an option. Well, we already have the hybrids, so should we even be considering diesels? Do diesels offer any extra... Um, advantages as compared to hybrid and the main driving reason behind even comparing the two is well savings in terms of um, gas uh, we everybody wants to make their buck to go longer when it comes to cars so i have good news in the sense that the diesels are very comparable to hybrids in terms of overall fuel consumption the next big question that the average car buyer asks itself well is a diesel engine car cheaper than a hybrid? Well, let's see. If we were to co compare or even first look at Volkswagen Canada, and a sensible person might consider perhaps uh, a Volkswagen Golf wagon because well, it offers a lot of space in a relatively small package. And um, if you were to build the model, you'll quickly realize that the uh, bottom feeder model, the so-called trend line that starts at 22,975, it does not offer um, TDI clean diesel choice. For that, you have to step up to the comfort line. And um, if you click the checkbox beside the 2-liter TDI clean diesel, the starting price is $27,025. Quick math will reveal that if you want to step up from the bottom feeder model to the next one up, in order to get the diesel, that's going to set you back by about $4,050. Now, if you perhaps would like to consider a larger car, perhaps a Passat, a diesel Passat, the price difference will actually be a whopping $5,700 for a diesel as compared to a similarly equipped um, gas uh, Passat. Now, if you were to compare these prices to one of the longest uh, lasting uh, hybrids, or, or a hybrid that has been around for, for quite a long time, um, uh, and being sold by Toyota is the Prius, and one of their newer models, the Prius V, which in terms of uh, overall size and internal space is very comparable, if not a little bit larger than the Golf Wagon, you'd notice that it's very similar price point. It's about $27,400. Uh, those of you who are quick with math, you'll instantly realize that, well, hey, this is about $400 more than a uh, Golf Wagon would be. Well, that is true. However, you need to notice that the Golf Wagon does not give you the option of an automatic transmission, and it comes only with a manual transmission, while the Prius actually comes at this price with a continuously variable transmission, hence an automatic transmission. Now, I know some of you, just like me, love driving a stick shift, but not everybody is like that. So those of you who love the comfort of the automatic transmission, well, you realize that for the same price, a Prius offers more than the um, wagon would. So what is the final conclusion in this um, uh, discussion? Should you buy a diesel or should you consider a hybrid instead? Well, ultimately, it comes down to your personal preference, right? Uh, we already discussed that both a diesel and a hybrid would be a lot more fuel efficient than a gas car. 
and as you saw from this quick comparison between the Volkswagen and the Toyota there is really not that much difference in price however those of you who perhaps like sportier driving you might want to consider diesels because uh, they historically have had a much stronger torque rating than gas cars and especially the hybrid cars so I hope you like my um, short presentation about this topic I will be presenting uh, about car topics on a weekly basis so please subscribe to my channel and come back for more thank you goodbye